What's up y'all? Jeff Thrasher with the Thrasher House and this is the video of how to make a platform for under $100 using wood from Home Depot. I'll be honest, this is the first time that I'm making a video like this. I've never done a how-to and um, it's not the best, but if you need to know how to make a platform that's pretty kick-ass for under $100, this is the video that you want to watch. So bear with the rough moments. This is my first time doing editing or transitions or anything like that because all of my instructional videos I've ever done, they have always been one single cut. So bear with me, but let's go for a ride. Let's go to Home Depot, grab some stuff, come back, throw some things together, and then we'll show you the platform at the end. Bang on y'all. Yep, here we are y'all, Home Depot. Gonna go buy some wood, some screws, a little bit of glue, maybe some paint. We're gonna make a speed bag platform for under a hundred bucks. Here we are in the plywood section. These are kind of pre-cut plywoods. And I was hoping that they were gonna have an AC plywood. See how that says AC right there? The AC is the grade of plywood that it is. That means that one side of it is an A. It's a grade A. The other side's gonna be a grade C. So this side's gonna be really nice and smooth, staying out real well. The other side's probably gonna have some knot holes and stuff like that in it. You're not gonna wanna use that as a visual. This will be your visual side. But I'm wanting to build this platform without having to cut any plywood. So we're gonna go with a BC plywood. It's 24 inches by 24 inches, almost three quarters of an inch thick. So that's what we're gonna start with. That's gonna be our drum surface. And we're gonna get two of them so we have a real solid surface. The other cool thing about the BC is it has a pretty decent finish on the B side. And we're gonna paint this anyway because you're gonna wanna put some type of treatment on the wood so that the oils don't get absorbed. They don't get pulled out of the leather of the speed bag. It's about four time, okay? This is one of the things you always want to look at on your lumber is, is it straight? This one looks pretty good. There you go this way. And you can see down there that it's got a pretty strong bow in it. So we don't want one like that. We want ones that are like on my cart, nice and straight. We want straight lumber to start with. Makes your project a whole lot easier to do as you go down line. Down here to the deck mate screws. And I'm going to pick a four inch that has one of the uh, star tips. Much, much easier to drive into the wood. So we're gonna get some four inch. And then we're also gonna drop over here, just cause I like the way these look. We're gonna get some two inch right here as well. These always look real nice. And then we get to the wood glues. So which, which one's the best one to go with? Me personally, the one that I pick all the time is this one. It's kind of middle of the road. And chemically, I can't tell you why one is better than the other one. This one has a little bit longer assembly time. This one glues pretty quick. So um, this is the one that I typically go with. So that's what we're going with today. Here we go. 9613 for three two by fours two sheets of three quarter inch, 24 by 24 inch plywood, a couple of cans of spray paint, some screws, some glue, and some paracord rope in there. Yep, 100 bucks, and that's all it looks like. Sorry y'all, I've got multiple projects going on at once. Now, once you get home, look at your wood again. At the store, you're gonna pick out the best pieces of wood that you can. And when you get home, you're going to be like, is that thing that bowed? Sometimes it is. Sometimes it's not. But when you get ready to start cutting wood up, because you're going to have some measurements that you're going to go off of, you don't just grab the first board and just start cutting. Look at your wood. Say, hey, let's measure this out. See which boards are going to be the best ones for certain face boards or boards that are going to be in the back and aren't going to be seen that's where we want to use these ugly knots and stuff like that okay so depending on how you want your stuff to look i would definitely take the time to make sure that your boards are straight this is it this is the platform before i start putting it together these are all the parts it's going to take to make this 
two 37 inch cuts that are cut on 45 in, 45 degree angles. 37 inches is measured from tip to tip. Two 30 inch boards, those are gonna be your supports that go from the wall straight to the end of this. The 37 inch ones are gonna be your angle support. 21 inch boards are gonna be your front, back, your wall plate. 24 inch boards gonna be where your 37 inch boards attach to up on the wall. So that's another wall plate. And then um, we've got an 18 inch board that is purely, it's gonna be used with these adhesive strips. It's only gonna be placed on the wall just to kind of help support everything as we're getting up, everything up on the wall. Really, really cool, easy trick. I prefer an impact drill like this. I love these things. And then I've got a stud finder, a little small level, a little torpedo level. If you've got a larger one, those come in handy too. Got some little rope in case I need it. When you're doing this by yourself, sometimes you need some rope. Some little adhesive strips for the 18 inch board. And then I've got some four inch star bit screws and then some two inch star bit screws as well. Some bare paint, we're gonna try that out. I've never used that brand. And of course, my old tried, tried and true tested um, uh, type bond wood glue stuff works great. And my old Hitachi jigsaw. I cut all this wood with a Hitachi jigsaw. That's right. And then we've got the speed square. So I'll start putting this stuff together and kind of do a little couple little videos just segmenting the way that it looks but this is it disassembled this is all the stuff i mean all the wood and everything i actually used one less two by four than what i bought at the store the the command strips actually put me over a hundred bucks by a couple of dollars but by returning that board i'm going to get my money back and i'll be under a hundred bucks boom you know, when I got everything kind of dry fit, I was looking at the 45 degree angle and I thought, you know, this would probably look a whole lot cooler if we had a little bit lower angle on it. It's going to fit in the garage easier too. So I changed the angles from 45 and 45 to 31 degrees and 59 degrees. When I added everything into the calculator on the app, it was like 30.901 something and then the other end was 59 point something something so we're just going with 31 and 59 now if you've never used the speed square before and you don't know how to come up with the angles a lot of people have used them to come up with square but they don't know how to actually do the angles so if we're going to call this spot right here we'll call this spot zero so this is our zero degree if we were to rotate this, now see there's degrees on here. And these are the numbers that we need to pay attention to right here. No other numbers on here. These numbers along this angle because starting here at zero, if we move this to where the back of the board right here lines up at 10, this is now a 10 degree angle cut. So if we keep pivoting to where we get to 31 degrees, on the back side of the board over here, this angle is now 31 degrees. This would be our scrap, that scrap, and this would be the good. So that's 31 degrees right there. And then on the other end, we would measure from this point right here, coming this way, 35 inches. And then when we get to 35 inches, we're gonna come up with zero again. And the t this time we're gonna go this way to get our 51 degrees. Same thing, we're gonna start at 10, 20, 30. This is gonna be our pivot point. We're just gonna swing this back number. See back there, back here. This number, we're gonna swing that, stay pivot right here. Till we get to 59 degrees. And our cut right here 59 degrees. That is how you use a speed square on the angles. At this point, what I've done is I've taken the two 30 inch runners, the long length ones, and I've attached them to all the 21 inch boards. So this is your front board, back of the board. This is your wall plate, your runners. I will tell you, I forgot to mention this earlier, is that if you do happen to have some wood clamps of any type or 
vice grips, whatever, it does make putting these things together a little easier. But we want a very solid platform, and that's what we're gonna wind up with. I've already attached the 24 by 24 inch main drum. Notice, screwed up there. So, but what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna attach this. I'm not even gonna glue it, y'all. I was thinking about gluing it, and then I was like, you know what? I'm not even gonna glue this thing because maybe in time they want to do LEDs or something like that and like you know same thing that I do so I'm just gonna secure it with some more screws and call that done I mean you know hey take the wood glue back and save some money don't really need it and you'll see when this thing's up and solid you won't be able to tell the difference and easiest way to find center for marking your swivel just take your 37 inch board, lay it across your drum, corner to corner. You don't have to draw across the whole thing, just somewhere across the middle. And we're going to do the same thing, corner to corner. And that's where you'll put your sits. Go ahead and put your swivel on there and pre-hole, uh, pre-drill the holes. And um, that'll be one less thing you gotta worry about when you're just trying to mount it. Well, this is it before paint. So we've got our 35 inch length. That's right, I changed them to 35 so I could change the bottom angle to 50 and the back angle to 30 degrees. I wanted it to be a little lower than taller. When I had it at uh, 45s, I just didn't like the way it looked. So this is a little bit better. Uh, we've got our two stacks of plywood on the bottom, 30 inch boards running long ways, 21 inch boards running across, and our 24 inch board capturing those supports. So now we're about to go put this thing in some paint and see how it looks afterwards. Say it's a solid unit already, and I'm leaving this design open so if they choose to fill the inside of this with sand to make it even more dense they have that option you know but right now i had a hundred dollar budget that we had to work with and we're within that budget bad i'll take that you know, it's flipped the other way i'm not gonna have much light on it shine Here's your moment of silence so you can get your screenshot so i figured that there were people out there like me that if i was watching somebody's video that was making this is like man you know do you have any drawings of this so yes i do so it's very self-explanatory um these are just that's your two by four frame your two by four support and your ply plywood um drumming surface and the measurements your angles, the measurements for this angle, your your angle for that one, and then your top view, 
you know, give you give you another moment. There you go. All right. So um, this is, you know, this is the top board that's going to be on the wall. That's where your your supports are coming up, stabbed in there, and then you got your your other wall cleat up against the wall, and then this is your drumming area, 24 by 24. Bang on, y'all. I mean, this is your this is your hundred dollar drum. I'm sure that people. I mean, I would love. We should have. We you know what? We should have a contest for who can come up with the craziest. The craziest $100 drum. That'd be something to see, wouldn't it?